Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and today I'll be doing a Kismet tutorial on how to set up a sequence puzzle. And what I mean with this is that you do things in a certain order and you unlock a door or whatever. I'll just jump into the game here and I'll show you what I mean with this. Uh, move the So I have these five boxes here and when you shoot them they will change color until you have all five. But if you do it in the wrong order um, it will reset and then you have to start over again. So no matter what you do unless you shoot them in the right order uh, they will all reset. So you have to start over. So to start this off I will change back to the intro map. Um, what I have here is just a basic room. I can show you the views. So it's a basic room, one light, one player start, these five boxes. Uh, I've also included a couple of triggers here just to show you. I'm not sure how well this shows up on the uh, on the screen here, but this is just a touch trigger. And this on the left here is a use trigger. So you move up to it and press the E key and then it triggers. I just thought that the uh, the shooting triggers work best for the video here because uh, firing is more obvious um, but I just thought I'd include them. As you can see here I have uh, the use trigger so you just click the trigger new event using and used. The touch one is just new event and then touch but the one I will be using is interp actor take damage so you choose the interp actor new event take damage that's the one we'll be doing today and I will actually upload both the finished version as well as the uh, the start map here so you can see how it works oops I shouldn't have deleted that because now everything is dark but whatever I can just rebuild it later I'll change to fast quality um, so what we have here and what I've done already is I've selected all the five boxes and then just right clicked and set uh, take damage new event take damage what we'll do next is select all five uh, we'll set the damage threshold to one instead of a hundred so you have to do just one point of damage and as you can see anything that's changed in the properties will become bold um, so when I move down here you can see max trigger count zero which means infinity so you can shoot them more than once basically and trigger delay to one uh, just to make sure that if you fire two shots it will not uh, reset because you do the same box twice uh, I can show you at least what I think it will do like if you play it uh, boom if I play it here unfortunately I'll have to move the, the window here a lot so I won't be uh, showing the work uh, the map too often. Close the compile screen, show you what it work, looks like, and then I can just do... nope, I couldn't. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see here. I have them as interp actors. Do I have collision? Collide? No collision. Okay, that's the next problem. So we select all the boxes here. We change no collision to block all. This means I can actually shoot them. Boom. As you can see, the shots stop. Uh, and this is the intro level, so obviously there is no Kismet that changes the colors. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is you have to go to World Properties and change... Um, where is it? Here. Game Type. You open the tab. You set the default game type and play an editor to UT Deathmatch instead of... Uh, none. I think the default is none. Um, because that makes you start with a weapon, which I obviously have done already. So that's it. You add the five interp actors. They are available in the content browser. I don't really remember what. I think it's just box or something. Search for box. Um, it doesn't matter what... Oh, okay. It wasn't that. But you can use these as well like it doesn't matter at all you just take one fully load 
uh, yeah, down there. You can't see it, it's outside of the screen, but the second w lowest one is fully load. Then you just right click and add as uh, interp actor. You can't see that one either, sorry. Um, so I showed you the triggers as well, and once you've started yeah, collision on everything, we will start with the kismet. Now first I will do uh, the easy thing, which is that if you do it correctly, the, the box will change color. So what I will start here with is I will add a global variable, an int, and I will name this. Um, so if you name um, the variable name here to state counter, which is what I will use, it becomes a global variable, which means that any part of Kismet in this, as long as you don't use subgroups and stuff like that, it will be able to reference it. If you do new variable, named variables, state counter, you will get this sort of checkbox. Uh, this just means that it's a working and existing state counter that you can access from here, but you can't see the value in this one. Um, so it will start at zero, meaning that no box is changed. Um, I will have one, obviously, uh, for the first one, which means that one box uh, that sets the state counter to one, and then two, three, four, and five. Now, I'm doing this in order from left to right, because it's just easier to set up the logic. But then once you're finished, you can change the, the boxes around um, to make the puzzle harder, basically. Um, so what we'll do next is... Uh, condition, comparison, and compare int. Um, so if you shoot the first box and the state is zero, which is what it's supposed to be, you just plug in the zero and the state counter. And then what you want to do is uh, action actor set material. So you want to change the material and then you just select the box in the window here. You can see the transformer widget on that box. Right click object variable using interpector zero. This is just an easy way to make sure that you don't have to type in all these object stuff or the name of the object. So you go there, you click the node and you go to uh, new material and as you might have seen or as I showed you on the finished one I have an orange version of the dev map will I will use so uh, I will just select this one again it doesn't matter at all which one you have but once you have it selected in the content browser you just go here and you click the green arrow so it changes or it will change to orange um, I will just name this one like orange. Uh, so if you have text above here, it's just what you call it yourself, like you can write a description. But if you write it in the sequence variable, it will become a global variable. So this one is make orange. I will just copy paste it and then make another one, uh, make blue. And I will pick the uh, the default I think it's just called default, yeah, default material. So that one. I will just take that one and plug it in like I did with the other one because I will be using this for uh, the res resetting later. Um, so if I play this map now, I'm sorry that I don't have a. What the actual hell is going on? Uh. I boot. Yeah. Boom. Um, I'm hoping, yeah, that one should be inside. So as you can see, it's working, but of course it doesn't reset because we haven't done that part yet. Um, I'm sorry that I only showed it in the bottom right part. I just have a few notes on the right side so I can't move the editor window. Um, so that's that. Now we can just copy. Oh, I copied too much, sorry. Yeah, I can copy paste it. Uh, because again, you have to plug in the different actors here at the bottom.
to make it uh, work as you also have to change the int value because yeah I didn't do it up here but what we want is that once we've changed the color of one uh, we will also set the uh, set the value increase it uh, because obviously once we have one finished we want the next one to become activated so we have to change uh, or increase the vari variable here as well the state count one so what we do is new action math add int we copy paste the state counter so what we want to do is we take a new variable an int that has the value 1. We add 1 and state counter and the result is state counter. Um, you can also go in and hide the output to make the nodes easier to view. And if you control drag you can also change the order of the nodes on your Kismet nodes. So I can just hide these. So there. Every time we finish we should add the value of 1 to our int counter or state counter, sorry. Boom. And then we take the uh, take the nodes or the interp actors here. We create object variables for them. So that's one. I'll just do all of them at once. Um, I'm sorry I, I'm getting out of the screen again, but yeah, I showed you with one, so it's just the same for all of them with different numbers. So uh, let's zoom in again. That's number one. Number two, copy, except for that one. Oh, you couldn't do that. Copy, paste, delete. And then take what you get. Copy, paste, paste. Again, I'm just click dragging to move objects. Control plus Alt means you can select multiple objects. Um, let's see here. It's actor 0, 8, 9. And if you want to check it, uh, this one is the same as the take damage one. So I don't have to go into the view to see what I'm doing. So just plugging it in and taking this and plugging it in. Then I also have to change the state counter, of course. So zero, one, next one is two, sorry, outside of the screen then 3 and then 4 for the final one. So now that we've done the four uh, cases where you are correct, the, uh, the boxes should light up once you shoot them. So play from here, tab, move the window, 1, 2, 3, and then I'll try this one, nothing happens, 4, 5. So if you want a puzzle that doesn't reset, you just have to do certain things in one order. This is basically finished at this point. Uh, but what I wanted to create is something that also resets, because it involves a bit of more impressive kismet, basically, or some fancier stuff. Um, so the next part is um, where we get into the a little bit more tricky, because all these nodes are fairly easy. But the next point is to use an uh, an object list. So new variable, object, object list. Whoops, sorry. Object, object list. Then we just go into our browser window here, or view. Select all five of them, control click, and then insert selected actors into object list. What this means is that instead of doing an action five times like this make blue node here uh, instead of using it five times in a row and just connecting them we can in interface with the object list which is basically just an array 
with the objects put into it. Um, so what we do here is um, no, where is it? Object list here, new action, object list, and access. So this is just for the resetting. Um, I don't think I've set up so. Um, I will actually create another uh, global variable here, just an in, another int with the var name uh, index counter. And what I do with this is just to step through the object list. So it just goes from zero to four, and then reset it once we've reset the the puzzle. So we plug in the named variables in persistent level the index counter into index. The output object is just going to be a local object, a new variable, a new object, because we're just going to use this for the make blue. So once we once we shoot the, the box and if it's more or less than, um, than the correct number we want to access the object list, and we want to um, we want to set the the boxes to blue, the default color. Um, so if we play this as it is, if we do them all five correctly, and then shoot the first box here, it will just reset the first one because we never increase the index. So let's do that. Uh, once we've done the first, or set the first material to the default material again, again I'm sorry, I'm just talking like crap. Uh, we add, again, just a local one. We add one to the index counter this time. And we plug that in. Again, I'm just adding the number, so it starts at zero. And then what we do is we uh, do a new comparison, compare int, and we hide the outputs here. And then we take index counter again. So if index counter is smaller than five, which is the number of uh, variables or a number number of objects in our object list. So if it's smaller than five, we should keep going. Otherwise, um, nothing happens basically. So if index count index counter, which is a, is smaller than five, we should go back to index. Uh, the arrow here or the line going from this one is kind of all the way across, but yeah. So this should actually work as it is. And uh, we, if it's not the correct one, or if it's smaller than index, the index counter is smaller than five, go back to start and do it all over again, because we want this cycle to happen five times. So this is basically the tricky part of this. Once you get this finished, uh, you can just plug it into the other boxes as well. Obviously I'm just moving this around because I had everything a bit too close. So we take the bigger than or smaller than and you can make wires from both sides so you don't have to go back to the first node to start over. So I just uh, add a bit more space because everything was a bit too close before. So smaller than or bigger than Copy paste. Smaller than or bigger than. Copy paste. Boom. Boom. So hopefully this is working. Uh, I'll just tab again and move it in. So you can see all of it. One, two, three. And then it resets. Oh, okay. I obviously set a number of triggers to zero or something. 
Yeah, I didn't reset the the index counter. That's the problem. So if a equals b, I should um, set the uh, set variable down here. So new action set variable int. I'm just getting outside the screen. You should set the index counter back to zero again because otherwise it's not going to work. Every time you restart the um, you restart the access object list, you have to reset the index counter back to zero. That's the mistake I did. Boom. 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 And boom. So let's try it again. This time with more feeling. Boom, boom, boom. And shoot that one. And it resets. And now it doesn't work. Uh, Hang on a second. Yeah, I didn't reset the state counter either. So <laughs> I'm just making lots of mistakes. I have, because obviously, if you don't reset the state counter, you're not going to allow, um, allow the boxes to start over. So I just remove this, add the named variable uh, in persistent level, the state counter. So I make another one of these, copy paste it five times again, because obviously we reset the state back to zero, which means zero boxes are orange. And if you start working with Kismet, you're going to do this jumping back and forth a lot. <laughs> I can promise you that it's not going to be right the first time. I'd actually done this once uh, or I did the test map just yesterday and now it should be working again. Yeah. So if you shoot one of the last ones again or if you shoot one step ahead it will reset and if you shoot them all five times in a row ta-da! You've finished the puzzle. Obviously if you want the uh, or if you want something to happen once all five boxes are uh, orange you will just add it to this connection here. Like you have a matinee that opens a door or something, you just connect it to the out node here. Um, and you can basically ignore state counter. And if you want the uh, the boxes to do nothing once you've uh, reached this stage, what you'll have to do is you move this over a bit and then you test for uh, you do a comparison, like a compare bool. Um, if it's true, you do. Um, I'll just make a really quick one. So it's, let's say it starts at true. So if it's true, you and things take damage, you will do this whole loop that we've created and then once it's finished you just set this variable. Um, again you should be using a global variable uh, so you just set that to false. Um, which would mean that the boxes stop working once you've set it to false and something happens again. So that's how you break the loop and that's how you finish the puzzle. Um, so if you want it, want it in another direction or in another order, the easiest way is actually to just move the boxes around uh, because that will change the order but it will still make it easier to keep track of your logic. Um, and that's basically how you create the sequence puzzle. Um, it's how you break the chain once you're finished and how to expand upon it. You can basically add as many triggers as you want. The uh, the object list makes it so that it's easy to expand upon because if you have two objects, yeah sure, just having the nodes in order might work for you, uh, but if you have a hundred it probably will be easier like this because I use the object list a lot in my 
uh, WhatsApp map, and I've used like s several hundred, maybe thousands of objects in one object list. I wouldn't recommend it because Kismet starts becoming angry at you, but it can be done, and it's a lot easier than working with separate nodes. So I made a few mistakes, but I hope you liked this video. Uh, I will be making another one with the uh, combination locks from Dishonored the next time. Um, so thank you for watching, I hope you learned something, and have a nice day.